certain Jewish communities have a traditional art which scholars call chironomy. It consists of moving the hand so as to regulate the reading of the Hebrew scriptures in a chant which brings out the phrasing of the words, the sense that runs through them. The practice was noted in the Talmud and goes back to ancient times. It may have originated from the stylization of some natural gestures that customarily accompanied the voice when a man spoke in deep earnest. At any rate, the text of the Torah has been transmitted along with definite patterns of gesturing from time immemorial. These gestures are more than an antique curiosity. They are interwoven with the chanted words in a refined system of communication which makes the thought of the ancient Hebrews extraordinarily lucid and instructive. However, the hand movements were hardly known to the numerous Jewish communities of Europe, except in Rome, and they have not previously been documented. The recent immigration of most of the Asian and African Jews to the state of Israel has made it easier to record their customs. While I was in Jerusalem in August of 1966, I had motion pictures made to record the traditions of chironomy. This kind of scientific work must not be delayed because the old ways of life are rapidly dying out. My informants, who had come from Yemen, the island of Jerba off the coast of Tunisia, and Egypt, said that their children or grandchildren in Jerusalem are not learning the hand movements. The informants themselves learned them in childhood as a pedagogical device to guide their cantillated reading of the Torah. In their adult life, their only use for these movements is in case the Torah reader officiating in the synagogue loses the proper sequence of the chant as he scans the scroll. The scroll has only the bare consonantal letters. The reader must vocalize and intone them from memory. To come to his rescue, a prompter stands by with a printed book containing the fully marked text. Manually, not vocally, the prompter signals the strains of the chant. The Egyptians and Tunisians, as you will see, signal by tapping the reader on the back. It would not have been feasible for us to film a reader and a prompter on their feet during an actual service with the sacred scroll open before them, although some photographs showing this procedure do exist. This film does not simulate a scene in the synagogue. My aim in recording the hand movements was documentation of the system in all details. My informants were asked to demonstrate it as fully as they could. They were therefore to assume that they had under their direction a reader in continual need of guidance or a class of beginners. The hand movements of the Egyptian and Tunisian informants resemble more or less closely the accent marks which are written above or below the stressed syllable of Hebrew words in the Bible text. Each accent is known by a Hebrew or Aramaic name. I requested the informants before reading an illustrative passage from scripture to run through the whole list of accents and move their hands accordingly. The written notation goes back at least 1,100 years to the great Masoretes or punctators of the city of Tiberias in Galilee. Their system has predominated, although it is not the only one. To facilitate a comparison between their marks and the manual signs still in use, the first demonstration will be shown a second time with added subtitles consisting of the Hebrew words with their accents enlarged. 
The subsequent demonstrations will also be accompanied by subtitles. Shemi Levi Moshe.